Hey guys, so in this tutorial, I'm going to go into how you can create stunning landing pages for your business using leadpages.net. So if you're brand new to the world of landing pages, all they essentially are are just simple standalone web pages that somebody comes to or lands on that are designed with one specific purpose in mind. Now, usually that purpose is to give somebody value in exchange for their name and email address or to direct them to a product on the page for purchase. Now, you'll mainly see businesses using landing pages for things like webinar registration, or getting somebody to opt in for an ebook or something similar that gives somebody a lot of value and a little bit of an insight into what their business is about in exchange for their name and email. I've been creating landing pages for my clients for a few years now, as well as for myself. So I can honestly say that a landing page can definitely make or break the sales funnel. So you want to make sure that you're keeping it on brand and that it's simple and you're not overcomplicating it with way too many calls to actions or somebody has no idea what it is that they actually need to do on that page. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using leadpages.net because it's drag and drop and it's super, super easy. Even if you don't really have experience with web design, you can really easily integrate it within your website and your email marketing platform. So over the next 18 minutes, I'm going to take you through the exact steps you need to take in order to create a beautiful landing page, an awesome pop-up box, and even a thank you page, all designed with the purpose of getting people onto your email list. All right, guys, so we're just going to go ahead and get started on leadpages.net here. You can sign up with them with a free trial. After that, the basic plan on a monthly payment plan at the time of recording is $37 a month. So that's for the absolute basic monthly payment plan. If you want to go for the annual or the upgraded versions, it's more. But again, you can try it out for 14 days and see if you like it. Or if you're working as a freelancer, of course, you'll be logging into your client's accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in here. And we're just going to go ahead and get started with setting up our own lead page. So once you're logged in, you're going to see a few options up top here. You're going to have an option to set up your own lead page, your own lead box, lead links, lead digits and templates. So these two at the moment are only offered on the upgraded payment plans, whereas we are on the basic plan. So we only have access to the first two and then of course our templates, which is totally fine for what we need today. So we're not going to be creating a split test. We're just going to go ahead and jump in and create a brand new lead page here. So that's going to take us to our templates tab, as you can see up top here. Now you can sort these by highest converting, most recent or by specific things that you're looking for your lead page to do. This is really, really handy. And I really suggest that you do do this because these specific designs are optimized for what it is that they're trying to convert with that lead page. So if you're looking to sell a blog or promote a business or sell a product, then you might want to go by these specific categories. But I already know which one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to jump into it here. You can always preview it, but I already know I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on use template. Now, the first thing it's going to ask you to do when you click on use template is to name your design. This is going to affect the slug of your lead page or the URL. So make sure that you are quite descriptive in naming it. If it's a thank you page or checkout page, just be wary of the fact that it is going to affect the URL. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this one test landing page. All right, so once you are in this editor section, you're going to see a few things on the left hand side here and then your working area that you're going to be creating within is on the right hand side. So this top bit is obviously not going to be visible. That's just the name of your project. You've got the undo redo buttons, your preview page. So that's where you're going to be able to view your design on desktop, mobile and tablet at any time. And then of course your publish button there. So on the left hand side here, this is going to take you back to your navigation menu that we were just in. And then you've got the widget section. So this is going to be all the different elements on your page, like the buttons and countdowns and videos. And these are all the different things that we are going to be adding to our design. So I'll talk you through them as we're using them. And then you've got your page layout. So that is where the different sections and rows and columns of your design are stored. So if you need to kind of have a look at what's in a specific section of the page, you can toggle this on and off from the drop down and also control the visibility. You can duplicate and of course erase specific parts of the page. And then finally you have your page styles. So that is the styles of the overall page. 
which is also where you're going to be able to affect things like the branding of the page here, your page width, the background, font styles, all of those sorts of things. And then you've got your page tracking at the end. So this is really handy if you're going to have people sharing the page. So you want to make sure that you are optimizing it for SEO, for Facebook as well. So you can choose the thumbnail there. And then finally, you've got your analytics. So if this is going to be a page that is going to be used for Facebook ads, for example, this is where you would be putting in your Facebook pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by changing up the page styles here because I don't really love that blue. So I'm going to go ahead and change that page background there. I'm going to change the image to an image that I've uploaded. You want to make sure that you are optimizing your images. So this is something that I've just grabbed off of Unsplash. It is quite a large image, but sizing wise, it's actually quite good. So you want to make sure that you are resizing the images before you're chucking them into here, even though it will probably optimize them a little bit for you, but you still want to make sure your loading speed is quite good. Then you can also impact things like your image overlay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to Chuck in our hex code here and I'm going to change the opacity. That looks good to me. Maybe a little bit more transparent. Awesome. So the other thing I want to do is change my favicon here. So I've already got ours. So it's going to basically replicate what we already use for our website. So it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb when somebody does land on it, it's just gonna have that in their tab on their browser. And then I could play around with the font styles here. So I'm gonna go for Railway with all of them actually, because that is our font of choice. Now, of course, you can do this depending on your client's branding or what is already present on their website. So you wanna replicate their current branding as much as possible. We don't actually have a countdown on this page, so I don't have to worry about that so much and I'm gonna go and jump into the page layout. So you can specifically do this by just clicking on different things over here, or you can also affect this over here. So I wanna go ahead and change our logo, and I'm gonna pick our logo over here. So let's change that. And I don't want this particular ebook to be there. And I'm actually not going to have an image here. What I'm going to have there is my video. So instead of just changing the image is I want to add a separate column, just a blank column here. I'm going to drag that up and this column is going to have a widget dragged into it, which is going to be a video widget. So now I can go ahead and go back into the page layout and go ahead and delete that column. Yes, I want to delete that. So it's going to enlarge my video section. Now, if I click into the video, it's going to ask me for the embed. So I'm just going to use a sample here from our YouTube channel, which is just an unlisted video here specifically for our resource library. So if you go into share and embed and then grab this code, jump back in and paste that in here. So that's going to show up with our video. Perfect. And now this is specifically for our resource library. So I'm going to change this by clicking Command A on Mac or Control A on desktop to highlight it and write something like um, looking for our hidden resource library. And I'm actually going to delete this one. And here's where I'd write something along the lines of uh, look no further. Click below to get your secret password straight to your inbox. So obviously that's a little bit hard to see. So what I might actually do with this column is go into settings and choose a bit of a background color for that, maybe white, and then change my, yeah, I would probably actually go with white, change the opacity, and then change my text color to be dark, just not too dark. Yep, and 
one again. Yeah, that looks all right. You could play around with the opacity of the back there. I want my button to be full width. So now I'm gonna click into my button, change the styling of that. So you can play around with the size of the button, whether you want it to be full width or not whether you want it to be square, rounded, etc. There's lots of different options there and your fonts as well here. So that's the one thing we haven't changed to railway yet. And maybe I'd go and increase the size just a tiny bit. Now you can change the background color of that button. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my dark here, my gray, and then just have a white text there. That looks good. And then at the bottom here, you've got a little section for your copyright information. So it's up to you whether you have that there, whether you want to include your privacy policy or any disclaimers there as well. But this is a pretty simple one page opt in. It doesn't have to be super complicated as people often make it. The less information you actually provide people with, the better. And then you can go ahead and preview your page then it's gonna have it there in mobile. So that's super, super simple. Don't even have to scroll down to see all the information. Then you've got your tablet view. And then of course we've got the desktop view that we've already seen. So I'm gonna exit the preview. Then when you click into this particular button, it's gonna have this hyperlink section over here. So it's already telling you that a pop-up is going to appear when somebody clicks that. So you can go ahead and click on view and edit. And essentially now you're not editing your lead page anymore, you're editing a lead box that's gonna pop up. So you wanna make sure that this is quite relevant to what you've just created color scheme wise, font wise and everything in between. So obviously I'm just gonna go ahead and change this cause it's not an ebook anymore. Send me the password. And then I would change the form options here. So as soon as you click into that, this is going to appear. You've got your integrations there. So what I actually want to do is change this integration um, to our active campaign. So I want to make sure that it's all going in the right place when somebody opts in here. So I would go and change that to our resource library list. And we will then go to fields and I would want to add first name field. Yep, first name. I'm happy with that. And I would change this and move the email down so the first name appears first. And then at the end, you've got your actions. So this is what will determine where somebody actually ends up once they click on that button. So we're gonna deal with that next, but for now, let's go ahead and just edit that button so it suits our previous button. So we're gonna go ahead and make that a dark background and a white text. I'm gonna change the text over to railway, change the sizing a little bit, send me the password. Oh, I don't like the sizing and the capitalization. Password, perfect. Yeah, so that looks good. Awesome, so I'm gonna leave it at that actually for now and it's already automatically saved everything for us. So now if you just jump back into your actual navigation, your dashboard here, this is gonna be there already and what you can do then is just duplicate it and now it's gonna be test landing page, thank you page. Cool, so it's gonna replicate exactly what you've just done. This can be really good for split testing as well. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the exact design that we have just created for our thank you page. So that somebody will then click on that button saying, yes, send me the password. And it's just going to essentially allow them to stay on a page that looks very similar to what they've just been on. So it doesn't throw them off. We wanna obviously delete a few elements from this page. So I don't really need my video to be there anymore. I will actually keep these. I will just move them over a little bit here and move this over as well. Yep, cool. And now what I'm gonna do is go to page layout. So in this particular section, what I wanna do is I wanna add a new row. And inside that row, I'm gonna add a few columns. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually put my widget inside of the first column and then I'll replicate that. So we're gonna go ahead and 
add an icon. So now it's gigantic, but that is going to change. I just need it for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna click into it and make that white to make things easier. And now what I wanna do is I wanna actually go ahead and replicate that. So I'm gonna click on duplicate. And as I keep duplicating, it's gonna create a row of four of these smiley faces for me. Now I can click into each one and go over to this section over here and it's going to provide me with some different icons. So this is where I can then change them to our social media accounts. So they don't have to all be smiley faces unless I want them to be. So we could go and link to our Pinterest account, our Facebook account, maybe LinkedIn or YouTube if we want. So you've got all the different options here, maybe a Twitter account. I would actually want to go with something that looks looks similar to what I've just selected. So I want to create that nice consistency and YouTube and I'll actually go and change my Pinterest one to that as well. So then what you would do is essentially just go over to this link section and then go to external URL and provide your Pinterest URL there and your Facebook and Twitter and YouTube so that people can go and check out your different social media profiles. Now, I also want to go ahead and I'll minimize that. I'm going to go ahead and just add a row below this as well. And that's where I'm just going to go ahead and drag my button over here. So it's just going to say, take me to living to Rome.com. And then it would have not the pop up form URL, it would actually be a external URL. So it would just go straight to living to Rome.com. And that's it. So you can say that you just wanted to pop up in a new window. All right, so now you've got this white square here so we can delete that. That's just this section over here. So as soon as we hit delete on that, it's going to make this full width and then we could just say, thanks, oops, thanks for signing up. Check your inbox for your secret password or get started with our social icons below. All right, so I would probably make that darker just so people can see it. Maybe bold it a little bit. That looks pretty good. So I would actually probably publish this first as it's just the thank you page. So we'll go ahead and publish that. Then this is our URL, so you want to make sure that it is the URL that you want. But we don't actually need that URL and we actually don't even need it to be published in order to link it here. So I would actually change this, send me the password so it's consistent. And then remember that we've got our pop-up form, so I'm going to go ahead and view and edit that. And if I click on that, it's going to bring me to this section over here. And now if I go over to actions, I can click on lead page and it's going to have the test landing page. Thank you there. So that is what's going to take them to when they click on send me the password. And of course, it's also going to trigger the automation that we have set up based on active campaign and the specific list of subscribers that we are saying that we want this to go to. It's going to trigger all the events in the automation itself. But as far as lead pages is concerned, as soon as they click this, it's going to take them to the thank you page. So I'm going to go ahead and publish that just so you guys can see the whole process and we're going to sign up with a fake account. So let's go ahead and click on publish. Cool. So now this is our page. So let's go ahead and open that up in a new tab. So we've got the video there. I'm going to click on send me the password. Test and test at test.com. And then I end up on our thank you page. And that's it. So obviously I would have these linked to our social profiles or then it would just go straight to our home page of our website, open up in a new tab. So I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that tutorial and you found it really useful in creating your own landing pages for your business or for your clients if you're a freelancer. And if you did like it, make sure to give it a like, a share and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a weekly video. And please let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, keep creating the life you love.